Today we've got something special, something we've never done before. We've looked across all of our 50 plus video tutorials that we've put out in 2024 to find the five most loved tips that we put out across all of those videos and we found them as selected by you. So we're going to show you these five tips ranging from Copilot to Outlook to Microsoft Lists. Tips that you can bring in your daily workflow to improve the way that you work. Now, if you haven't already, do hit that subscribe button to find more great content like this in 2025 because we've got so much more planned. So let's dive in. And in fifth place, we have Microsoft Lists. The ability to have automated email alerts when things change inside of your Microsoft or SharePoint lists. So let's go and dive in and find out how you can bring that into your list and get automated notifications in seconds. Now, as I mentioned, the Microsoft list lives effectively in Microsoft 365 under a SharePoint site. That means under this scenario, we can actually go to the Automate tab, we can set rules and I can create a new rule. That rule could be when a new item is created on our issue tracker, I want to be notified. And all I would need to do here is effectively send an email to either an individual by name, and I can search from my own account, I'm using an account for Alex, and select that here. Alternatively, I could actually clear that and I can actually set it to the person it's been assigned to in the list. So when someone creates that issue, there is a column called assigned to, and once that person is defined, an email will be immediately sent to that person to advise them that an issue has been assigned to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create, and that rule has now been applied. And again, I could create additional rules for those alerts to be sent based on different activity. Maybe data in a column change, maybe a status was updated. Well, I could again say when the status changes, to a specific value, and again, I can select it to blocked, send an email to me as the project manager, so effectively I know that this has been blocked and work needs to be done to move that on. So now we have an issue tracker. We also have the automated alerts, meaning you're gonna get email alerts when important things change. And in fourth place, there were major changes to Microsoft Planner this year including the ability that we've never seen before to create personal plans inside a planner. No longer did we need to have a shared plan to begin with, you create a personal plan and either keep it that way or share it later. Let's dive in and see how you could create a personal plan inside a planner. But let's consider creating a plan and also a brand new capability that you can access without any additional license in charge from Microsoft, that being the new personal plan capability. I've been asked many times for different comments and people of, is it possible to create a new Microsoft Planner but only share it with yourself? What if you didn't want the Microsoft 365 group behind it, including a SharePoint site and also that shared email address for something that you're just planning that you need to work on, either personally or in the workplace? And sadly, over many years, the answer has always been no. We can use Microsoft to do to do that, but sadly, creating a planner will always invoke the need to create a group, but not anymore. Now, inside of the new planner experience, we can go over to the new plan option in the top right. And what we can now do is scroll down and see these different templates, and you'll see some have this diamond icon next to them. They're planner premium plans. We're not gonna consider them just yet. Instead, let's consider the basic planner templates that we've been using for many years now the simple plan, project management, and so forth, all freely available for you to use. So if I selected here a business plan by left clicking into this template, we can see we can have a preview like we saw before in the planner experience about what it's going to create. Let's select use template and have this plan created. All we then need to do is then give our plan a name. With that done, we'll also see we can add it to my pin plans, immediately giving access to it through the new planner app. But the important point here is we no longer need to attach this to a Microsoft 365 group. No, we can leave that blank and then select create. Now, as we haven't attached it to a Microsoft 365 group, this will be created as a new personal plan. Yes, it's not shared with anyone else but yourself. So you can actually go into any of these tasks and add yourself as one of the assignees to the pieces of work. 
But in the top right, you'll now see a padlock icon showing as private to you. Yes, you can now freely update your plan in the safe knowledge that no one else has access to your plan. We can also get back to it really easy. Through the My Plans and through the Personal option, we'll see that business plan is now displaying here because this is a personal plan and private only to me. Do you want to change the way that you work in 2025? Find new ways of working in Microsoft 365? Or why not check out a range of free Microsoft 365 eBooks which we've linked below. Yes, we've created a range of different eBooks to help you co-pilot with prompting, task management with Microsoft Planner and Planner Premium, and even covering other capabilities in Loop and Microsoft 365. And they're all linked below and you can download them today. So now you're upskilled in Microsoft 365, let's head back into those tips. And in third place, we're sticking with Planner. The ability to file an email under one of your plans. It's tricky, of course, to do in Planner, but you could use the Microsoft 365 group, which comes with a SharePoint site, to also go ahead and file an email that you're sending on to have easy access for you and your colleagues in the group. Let's go and see how that was possible inside a planner. But with projects come emails. And of course, as we know, your plan can certainly work with files. We've seen that earlier in your dedicated SharePoint site and by attaching files into it through planner or just adding files into your SharePoint site for your colleagues. But none of that works for emails. So how could we potentially file one of your project emails so you can actually access it in your project team that's all come from your planner. We can actually do that because we're gonna use a technology that again comes from Microsoft 365 Groups. That allows us to have access to a shared mailbox. It works a little differently because there are some limitations. Let's go ahead and open up Microsoft Outlook and go and check it out. So here I am inside of Outlook. We can actually see on the left-hand side, we have a group that's called Project Winter. If we open it up, we can actually see we've got the new winter group is ready. We've also added a further comment on a task which has only been shared within the group mailbox from Planner itself. Now this project winter mailbox then allows you to go ahead and file email into it. And so that means that you and your colleagues can access this mailbox and pick up any email, review it and take action. You can do that in a variety of simple ways. For example, in my inbox, I've got a lot of email here. What I could just simply do is left click and drag an email and put it into Project Winter. I then sync it by opening Project Winter. We now see that that email has been synced and pushed into that shared mailbox to me and my team can access it. It's very straightforward to do. But likewise, you might want to send an email to your team or simply copy them in so it appears in your group mailbox. And how can we do that? Well, if I go ahead and click on send email, you'll see that your new mailbox comes with a dedicated email address. And inside a project winter, by left clicking, we can actually see it has four people granted access. Those are the two people we added inside of our plan, in addition to Henrietta, who we gave access to that task and therefore had wider access to your plan itself. By sending an email to this email address, it'll be shared with all of those individuals they'll get access inside of your group mailbox. So next time you want to send an email and copy in your team using your group mailbox, well, go ahead and click on the CC or the to button inside of Outlook. Go to all groups and search for your project or your actual group name being Project Winter. And here is the email address. Click on plus and it'll now add in that email. I could send the email to one of my colleagues, such as Miriam, chasing up the financial PO. And once it's sent, you'll see a copy of that email in your group mailbox that can be accessible to both you and your team. So if you're away from the office, you'll know what emails have been sent and how to pick up with them really quickly. And coming in at number two, we see major advancements in Microsoft Copilot. But what's the one thing we do every single day that takes so much time? Writing and drafting emails. So it comes as no surprise that many of you wanted to see the ability to have Copilot draft up your emails. So let's go and see how you can do that with the help of Copilot inside of Outlook. When it comes to using Outlook, you're gonna spend a lot of time writing up emails. And wouldn't it be great if we had an AI assistant that could write our emails for us? And with Copilot, that's what certainly it can do. 
Now here inside of Outlook, I've opened a new email message. And all I'm gonna do is click on the forward slash key to open up the sub menu and select draft with Copilot. In this dialogue, we can give Copilot information on what I need to generate an email around. So in here, I'm gonna chase up a proposal to one of my colleagues, and I'm gonna add that into this dialogue box. With the content added, well, we need to consider the sentiment of the email. In other words, how is it going to be worded to the person I'm sending it to? Now here we have these filter or slider buttons. We can go ahead and select this, and now we can change the tone of the email. Here we have direct, neutral, casual, and formal. We could even make it a poem. Not that I think an email would work as a poem chasing a proposal, but hey, it's up to you, right? Then we also have the length. Is it short, medium, or long? Now in this, I'm gonna put it as a formal email, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select generate to generate our email inside of Copilot and within Outlook. And there we have it. We now have an email that's been drafted over to Alex, which includes all the information and puts it in a very formal way. Now, of course, if we're happy with that, we can go ahead and select keep it. Or if you wanna make changes, you could just click into this box here and to add additional changes or change the tone. But I'm gonna go ahead and select keep it. It now inserts it into this email. Now remembering that Copilot is exactly that. You can now make changes to this email to make it fit more around the scenario. So it's just changing it more to your tone. Of course, you could go ahead and send this straight out, but it's always worth considering the audience and ensuring that the email meets your own requirements. But that just took seconds to do. By giving Copilot a scenario, it can draft an email pretty easily, allow us to refine it, send it, and save a whole heap of time. And coming in at number one, what could it be? Copilot, SharePoint, Teams, Microsoft Word, the whole range of different capabilities we covered. Well, actually, it was Microsoft Outlook. And specifically, it was the ability to create a meeting straight from an email by simply dragging and dropping that email inside of the new Outlook. So let's go and see how easy it is to schedule a meeting straight from an email inside of the new Outlook. And can a new Outlook help us with calendar management? We all need to create events and meetings in our diary. We spend a lot of our time doing that right. Well, here's a few examples that New Outlook can help you when it comes to managing your own diary. First off, if you need to book a meeting from one of your emails, it's very easy to do. All we now need to do is open up the sidebar and here you can see the calendar under this view. We can then left click and drag the sidebar and put add and there's event and you've left clicked and one dragged one of your emails. Once we do that, we now see a window appear inside of Outlook. It also includes all the participants inside of that email thread. The subject has been copied in from the email subject. And we also see the email in the body of the actual meeting request to refer to as well. So that's just saved us several minutes of drafting up a new meeting to get into someone's diary. But also in a new view of Outlook, you'll get suggested dates and times. I can see here dates and times that work for the rest of our attendees through automatic scheduling. By left clicking in here, we can see that everyone is available. So I can go ahead and then click on send. A job that would take five minutes has taken less than one by a simple left click drag. And let's not forget that in the world of hybrid working, sometimes there are requirements to join an in-person meeting. But how can that work in Outlook? So let's go ahead and open up my calendar. And here I'll go ahead and I'll create a new event you are now see a new version of Outlook that we have the option to create an in-person event, which then shown to others that we invite into our meeting. A simple flag and a checkbox here allows people to know that you need to be in the office when it comes to your next meeting. What about scheduling meetings? Is there an option to help you with that? And there absolutely is, although this was available in the older version of Outlook, we'll also take a quick refresher showing how it works in a new version of Outlook and this being find time or scheduling polls. All we need to do is go and add the people in our meetings and give it a subject line. With that done, we can head up to scheduling poll inside of our Outlook window. On the right hand side, we'll now see the availability of the people you're inviting into your meeting. For example, our meeting with Megan is on next Monday, and I can see that we're all available across these times during that day. What I can now do is go and select a few times that suit me as well, so it gives more options to the person we're inviting into our meeting. 
By selecting next, we can also set a location or we can leave it as a Teams meeting. We can also change these poll settings. But let's go ahead and create a poll. This now will insert a poll into your email, allowing Megan when she receives that email to vote on the time date that works for her and automatically schedule it into your diary when you've got that consensus. So let's go ahead, click send, and have scheduling polls and find time to do all the hard work for us. So there you go, our top five tips across 2024. Across over 50 video tutorials we've published and over 3 million video plays, we now know that Outlook and the ability to schedule a meeting by dragging and dropping it was your most favorite and most viewed. And I'd love to know which tip you think was the best across all of our videos by letting us know in the comments below. We hope that all the videos we created in 2024 helped you in your journey in Microsoft 365. As we look into 2025, well, why not get more from those tools by hitting the subscribe button so you'll find fantastic new ways to work because we're gonna still publish content every week how to get the most from Microsoft 365. If you haven't already, hit that like button and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.